I started to really question why I was there. You could tell that these were top amazing students with multiple research papers and amazing narratives and I was just there. I was the only one who hadn't attended or been involved in some type of way with an Ivy League school and I just felt out of place to be honest. Hello everyone, in this video I want to share with you guys my experience while interviewing at Cornell School of Medicine, one of the eight Ivy League schools known for being so selective in the admissions process. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sai and I am a first year medical student, MCAT tutor and pre-med advisor. This video is going to be part of my interview playlist where I'm going to be sharing with you guys my experience while interviewing at different medical schools. So Cornell School of Medicine receives around 7,000 applications out of which 600 students receive an interview and only 100 are able to matriculate for the entering class. The average MCAT and GPA are a 519 and a 3.9 respectively. And if I'm honest, this is one of the reasons why I didn't think I was going to get an interview at all. Having scored 516 on my MCAT and having a 3.8 as my GPA, my scores fell at the bottom 10% of the matriculating class. So it definitely didn't help. The school also accepts about the same number for in-state and out-of-state students, so doesn't really have a preference. One of the things that I asked myself before interviewing at the school was if there was really any benefit to attending an Ivy League medical school. So what I found out was that, yes, there are many benefits. In reality, the bigger the name of the medical school that you attend, just like any competitive program, is going to matter. It's going to be able to open more doors for you. Medicine as a career is all about networking, making connections, and having resources. So the more known the school is, the higher the chances you have at gaining those resources, that research precision, that volunteering, and getting to know the right people. With that being said, this should not be the only reason why you pick an Ivy League school as a school you want to go to. Try to look for things that match your narrative and the things that you look for in a school. Think about the location and the benefits that you would get from that specific medical school. Once you receive the interview, you're going to have to confirm your attendance to that interview and you're going to have to pick one specific date. Because of COVID-19, Cornell is also one of those schools that went to Zoom to have those interviews, just like you, Miami Miller School of Medicine. And as I mentioned in that video, it is good and bad at the same time. Good in terms of the financial aspect, but bad if you're the type of person who likes to have interviews one-on-one -on -one and have those interactions. So the available times are going to be split up into two different parts of the day, the morning or the afternoon. In the middle of those interview sessions, you are going to have the break. Dean's welcome speech and the Q&A with the students. Interview day experience was pretty straightforward. I picked the morning session just so I could get it done with. But one thing that I wanna say is that because I picked the morning session, I couldn't attend the welcome speech before having my interview. So I was pretty nervous. So the interview format is going to be two interviews, 30 minutes each, and they're both going to be traditional interviews, unlike you Miami, which had the traditional interview and the behavioral interview. As soon as I logged in, I remember I was waiting for the interviewer to enter the room. In the meantime, I was speaking to one of the admissions committee members and all of a sudden we started speaking in Spanish. It turns out that she had a Hispanic background and she couldn't believe that with my name, I knew Spanish and I was born in Cuba. It wasn't that she was questioning my background necessarily, it's just that she couldn't see, which I understand it's a little bit weird having that mix of the Lao and Cuba background in one student. So yeah, I mean, I was speaking to her in Spanish for a good 30 seconds, 45 into a minute before my interviewer joined the session. I'm only saying this to show you that you don't know who you're going to get on interview day, even at an Ivy League medical school. So with that being said, stick to yourself and who you are. My first interview was with a physician who was also a surgeon, head of one of the departments of the hospital. That was very intimidating, but it was very laid back. He spoke a lot. He gave his experience. He gave me his advice on life in general and how impressed he was on my background. We spoke about multiple things in general, but it, it did feel like a conversation. My second interview was with a medical student, also really chill. She also came from an underrepresented background. And so we kind of bonded over that and we spoke about my experiences, kind of like how me creating a nonprofit was meaningful because of where I came from and my personal experiences with cancer and whatnot. So also very, very personal. 
So after having those interviews, I went to the welcome speech and the welcome session. I immediately saw about 10 to 12 students as well in the session, and we had an opportunity to speak about who we were and an interesting fact. This was when imposter syndrome kicked in. I started to question myself and whether I was in the right place. I started to really question why I was there. You could tell that these were top amazing students with multiple research papers and amazing narratives and i was just there i was the only one who hadn't attended or been involved in some type of way with an ivy league school and i just felt out of place to be honest i started thinking about my mcat and my gpa and how my stats were pretty much at the bottom 10 percent of the matriculating class and i pretty much got in my head after going through all that, I can tell you guys to never question your abilities. Never doubt the person you are. And if you receive an interview, keep in mind that it is because you impress those people who read your application. In general, just worry about the things that you can control and whatever you don't have control over, forget it. In general, I can tell you that it was also an amazing experience, very laid back. It was more of a conversation and I don't have any complaints at all. A couple of months after I was waitlisted, but by the time that I was waitlisted, I was even thinking about that. I had already committed to you, Miller School of Medicine. I saw myself here in Miami uh, regardless. And I mean, for all I know, I could have gotten rejected at the end of the day, but that is pretty much it. Again, this is gonna be part of my interview series. If you guys like the video, make sure to like it and subscribe at the bottom. I'll see you guys next time.